Hi, my name is Robbie Schwarz, and we're here today to talk about testing ventilation systems. And we need to know about testing rate ventilation systems because the 2021 IECC has a new requirement that is asking us to verify that the ventilation systems in our house, that would be spot ventilation in our bathrooms, kitchens, and laundries, and whole house mechanical ventilation uh, is actually pushing or delivering the correct air from inside the house to outside the house. The code requires that this test be performed and that it be performed by an independent third party and that that independent third party reports back to the code official the results of that test. Starting with whole house controlled mechanical ventilation, we're talking about uh, exchanging air from outside the house to inside the house the premise being that the air outside the house is relatively more clean than air inside the house. You also have the ability potentially to filter that air or condition that air as it's uh, coming into the house or out of the house, depending on the strategy, which means that there are a number of different strategies for how to achieve whole house control mechanical ventilation. Because we're building our houses tight, we need to bring in air for the occupants, but we also need to um, help control uh, the, the production of moisture inside our house or the relative humidity inside our, our house, which is another key thing that whole house controlled mechanical ventilation does for us. So when we're talking about the different strategies to ventilate our house in this whole house concept, you can either use exhaust ventilation, supply ventilation, or balanced ventilation strategies to ventilate that house. Regardless of the whole house control mechanical ventilation system that you're going to install into your house, you also have to have spot ventilation systems. Spot ventilation is so also sometimes called local ventilation systems, and those are locations like your bathrooms, your laundries, and your kitchens, where you're trying to take pollutants out of the house as soon as they're being produced. Those pollutants would be primarily moisture in your bathrooms and your laundries, uh, but they could also be cooking uh, or the byproducts of cooking uh, when you're talking about ventilation systems in your kitchen. Code requires spot ventilation in our bathrooms, and it specifically says that if the fan is running intermittently, that it needs to be able to pull 50 CFM or cubic feet of air per minute out of that bathroom. That means that if I go in and use the bathroom and I turn on the fan and I leave and I turn off the fan, that is an intermittent use of that fan. If the fan is designed to run continuously, then it's, it needs to push 20 CFM of air. Unfortunately, we can't trust the rated flow that are most, that's on most of these fans. Uh, these fans are rated to push at least 50 CFM of air to meet that intermittent requirement. Uh, but once you attach duct to it, the dynamics of how that fan works uh, change pretty dramatically. So the duct installation, the termination on the outside of the house, all of those things impact how well that fan is going to be able to actually push its rated 50 CFM of air. Therefore, we need to use a device like this flow box to test it to verify that it's actually meeting the code requirement. Let me tell you more about how the box is actually put together here. So it is a box of a known size or known volume in essence. Uh, it has a weather stripping gasket so that I can create a tight seal on the drywall when I cover a fan. Um, it also has a specific uh, opening here that I can change the size of. And as long as I orient my gauge properly to the opening here, um, I can get a proper measurement. Uh, this is simply a handle to help hold the, the box up against the drywall and around the fan there. And then there is a pressure tap so that I can hook up a hose here and measure the pressure inside the box in relationship to outside the box. On the other side of the hose, I have two, I have a Y fitting or a, basically a Y fitting so that I can hook up to both sides of my gauge so I can measure pressure and then the gauge can, can uh, translate that pressure measurement into a flow measurement for me. If I don't do that, I can use the handy 
guide here and just measure the pressure inside the box in relationship to outside the box. And this table, if I know the size of the opening and I know the pressure, I can go across the table and get the flow measurement. The reason we can do this measurement is because air flows. Now we need two things for air to actually move. We need to have a hole and we need to have some type of pressure difference or driving force. In an exhaust fan, we create a negative pressure, air being sucked out of that room. So when I put this over the fan and I create a tight seal there, I am sucking air into the flow box through my known opening and it's creating a pressure inside the box in relationship to outside the box, which I then can measure with my smart manometer. So I'm measuring pressure and the manometer is translating that pressure into a flow in cubic feet per minute. So a pressure gauge or manometer is a pretty simple device. All it does is measure pressure. And then it's smart, it has electronics and computer chips inside of it, which ultimately are able to take that pressure measurement and translate it into a flow measurement. But the reality is on each side of the gauge, it's measuring pressure in order to do that. So in this case, we are measuring pressure inside the box in relationship to outside the box. And we'll put our tube on here in order to measure that on the input and the reference. So inside the box would be, our tube would go on the input side. Outside the box would be our ambient condition outside the box. We would leave this, this tap open. On the other side of the gauge, I'm actually measuring pressure as well, but I'm telling the gauge that I'm using a flow box. The gauge is then translating that pressure measurement inside the box into a flow number as long as I've told it that I'm using this box and the size of the opening that I, I have uh, set up on the box and also on the gauge. So just to recap, we've got these two devices that work together to ultimately measure pressure. That pressure is translated into a flow number. And then we can use that to determine if we've uh, complied with what the code is asking for. So to do the test, I'm going to hold the flow box tight against the drywall over the fan. And we're measuring the flow of air through our known opening in the box here. We're measuring about eight pascals of pressure inside the box. And that's giving us a flow measurement of about 59 CFM of air. This fan happens to be part of an exhaust ventilation system. So that 59 CFM we would have to take to uh, the ASHRAE 62.2 table and see if that's enough flow. But if this were a fan that was in a bathroom, uh, it is passing that test at 59 CFM of air. Just another tool that we can put into our arsenal so that we can build better, and I hope to see you in the field using it.